Hi, this is Mortis. Um, I'm at Amoeba Records and uh, this is what's in my bag. Yeah, Venom. I don't think that's a big surprise for people that know me. I mean, I'm actually a huge Venom collector. I was kind of hoping to find Welcome to Hell, their first album, which is like my favorite, but I guess it sold out. This was pretty cool. I mean, it was um, back in, I guess, 85 or 86. Uh, they were putting out a lot of these um, assault records. I guess they're like semi-compilations or something like that. I mean, they would put out like eight of them or something like that in different countries. So there was just so much stuff to collect with Venom, even though to me, they're basically four albums, but I've, got probably 300 records with them just based around those four albums. This crazy stuff, and I paid a lot of money for someone like this, it's really rare, and it's embarrassing to even admit the kind of money that I would pay for some of that stuff, and I'm not even going to say it because you're going to think I'm freaking crazy. How long do you think you've been collecting the, their records? It kind of goes in two parts, because I started collecting them in the early 90s when I was discovering, like, I was getting really into black metal stuff. And then, I guess around 2000, I sold off a lot of my collection and then I hated myself about five years later and spent a, just a ridiculous amount of money buying everything back. Plus more. I used to have about 2,000 albums, like records, and, and now I have 3,500. So it, it kind of became a bit of an addiction. Oh my goodness. But I've reined it in. It's, it's actually like a drug, you know? I started looking at my finances, and I'm like, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, classic band, probably my favorite band of all time. Oh yeah, In League with Satan is, um, was, was one of those fucking classics for me. Um, In the Mina Satanas, fantastic song, kind of represents the best of Venom, as far as I'm concerned. I'm probably not going to be able to talk as much about this, but I mean, Deep Purple. It took me a little longer. I needed to grow up a little bit before I got into that stuff. I mean, as a kid, I always knew about Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, you know, Led Zeppelin, but it wasn't like, it wasn't heavy metal the way that I wanted it to be. But uh, as I got into my 20s, I started really kind of appreciating, I guess, you know, songwriting and musicianship. And that's when guys like Richard Blackmore and John Lord and those guys come in to the picture because they're fucking incredible, you know. Most people would probably pull out like an album like In Rock or Fireball or something like that. And, I just really like this album. There's a couple songs that I freaking love. Uh, there's a song about Mary Long, who is, I believe, is some sort of like, it's a mix of two names. Politicians, I think, in the UK, that was super hypocritical. There's pieces of shit. And they made a really catchy song about it, you know, about hypocritical assholes. When will you lose your stupidity, Mary Long? Dig yourself a hole and jump in it. I thought that was a good line, you know. Sang, sang by Ian Gillen, you know, in his fantastic voice. Dig yourself a hole and jump in it. Judas Priest, British Steel, Breaking the Law, Grinder, Living After Midnight, and it's just a total fucking classic. This is probably the first uh, Priest album I ever heard um, on cassette, probably back in like the early 80s, when I was getting into like, you know, heavy metal. Wasp and uh, Saxon and all those like old classics and you know Rainbow and stuff like that and uh, of course you know Judas uh, Priest total total classic as far as I'm concerned I mean just just the riffs and the songs it's it's like blueprint for heavy metal of course with Rob Halford's sort of unmistakable voice it's you know if you want to start listening to heavy metal this is where you begin. Alright, let's see here. I'm gonna stick to the metal stuff for a little while. This is Halloween, Walls of Jericho. This came out on Noise Records, and back in those days, they were putting out all the classics as far as I'm concerned, especially in Europe, like Celtic Frost, Crater, Running Wild, Halloween, and, and all those types of bands. 
for some reason, I hadn't listened to this album for a long, long time. And I put it on and I was just, I was kind of like, dude, my mind was a little blown by how fucking good it is. Fantastic. I mean, um, this is the original singer Kai Hansen who later um, started Gamma Ray. And he, for some strange reason, I mean, he moved on to simply playing guitar and they got in like a, a different vocalist for Keeper the Seven Keys and the records that came after. They're very good as well, but I mean, this is absolute classic stuff. I mean, I don't know if it's known as power metal or speed metal these days, but as far as I'm concerned, I mean, this is, again, like with Judas Priest, this, this to me would be like a blueprint for really well done. Um, atmospheric in a, in a way as well, speed metal. Uh, it just has a really nice vibe to it that I really like. And I love uh, Kai Hansen's voice. I mean, I don't know why he didn't want to keep singing in Halloween. I don't, I don't get it. All right, I guess this is going to let the hard rock round. Kiss, obviously I grew up on that. Uh, people that know Mortis probably heard me talk about Kiss for about 25 years. My earliest memory as a kid is actually watching TV and Gene Simmons spits blood at the screen. I mean, that's not literally the first memory of my life. So that's pretty inspirational, you know, just that it was a good start. And uh, the thing about this one is I just, I just, this is just my favorite Kiss album. It's, it's a live album. It's based upon the three first records, which I consider to be probably their best ones. So this is like, you know, there's all the best shit put into this one album that has a really rough and cool sound to it. From what I understood, this was their sort of last ditch effort at starting to actually sell records because they weren't really selling records before this. And all of a sudden, they, you know, this thing explodes and, and they have these fantastic careers ever after. So that's, um, that's a big album for me. Uh, this one, this is Hawkwind. I think it's probably a lot of people may or may not know actually that Lemmy started in this band. And that's kind of interesting because it's so different from what Motorhead became. It's very spacey and innovative and, and sort of, uh, you know, out there. I and mean, it's what they call space rock, I guess. I suppose that's like the British version of calling German weird music for crowd rock. They both sound kind of stupid. But a lot of good stuff came out. And uh, I'm not really a big Hawkwind expert, but uh, this album was always um, interesting to me. I actually, I have a copy of this back home, which is, I believe, the first edition. And I bought that on my first visit to the States 22 years ago, 23 years ago. The original one kind of folds out into like this shield, like a huge shield, you know, which makes sense because it's warrior on the edge of time. So it folds out into this. You know, it's it's a strange thing. Oh, what else do we have here? Yeah, speaking of records that fold out, this is Possessed. I actually want to talk about their first album, Seven Churches, but it's so good it's probably sold out because they didn't have it down in the store. And this one also folds out into this like big fucking thing. So because it's called Beyond the Gates. So it's got this cool uh, sort of concept where the, you know, the gates open and basically you're in hell. Which is cool. It's awesome. It's heavy metal. I mean, you know, this is actually like more like thrash metal, but um, yeah, you can kind of get an idea of what you're expecting, you know what I mean? So uh, these guys were fucking cool, man. Jeff, the vocalist's um, voice was absolutely, it's, it sounded like basically like a demon. It was very brutal and very cool. When I was a kid, they had the best image I had ever seen. There was, there was so many spikes and leather and nails. It was like they were just covered in it, plus all the blood. I was probably about 13, 14 when I discovered them and I was like, I was sold. I actually even wrote one of the guys in the band asking to buy <laughs> buy like their outfits because I knew they stopped using them so, and I figured like maybe it's in the closet somewhere or something and I was getting into like the Emperor thing with black metal and all that stuff and I'm thinking I would be the envy of everybody in Norway if I could buy this guy's outfit. Yeah, but he didn't sell it. It, it wasn't for sale. And uh, actually one of these guys went on to um, I believe for Primus together with uh, Wes Claypool. I'm not sure exactly which one of these guys it is. Might be Larry. That's not a spectacular turn of events. And they go from this type of stuff to like really complicated, strange music. So that's a little anecdote right there. Yeah, we're calming down things. This is Enigma.
I was surprised to see this. I believe this is their, their third album. They've changed the cover artwork around. I mean, this looks a little bit like the original cover art. The thing about Enigma was you, you, could, you couldn't really find it on vinyl. The first one you could find all over the place. But everything else that came after was the CD. And that was very frustrating to me because I love Enigma. I think it's just the most sort of innovative, layered, um, sort of mystical pop music you can find. And uh, with a lot of really cool singers on it. It's basically one guy though, like a producer guy, Curly, a studio wizard, and probably a genius. And I will never be able to figure out what he's done. But the music is fantastic. I think that was my bag. Yeah. That's that was awesome. It. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. We that really was fun. appreciate you coming down today. Awesome. Ah! <laughs>